Black Sun available to buy now on Hyperdub Recordings, which is um, a label that has been going for five and a little bit years, correct? Yeah, last year celebrating its fifth anniversary. Yeah, we did a <clears throat> did a fifth anniversary compilation last year. Um, like a couple of double CD, like a CD of old tracks, tracking the last five years and a CD of new stuff. And unlike many artists, as, as far as I'm aware, there's only a couple of labels apart from your one that you've released your own music on. Is that correct? Yeah, I released stuff on... Temper, yeah, Fat Larry Skank, two thousand and one or two, Soul Jazz, yeah. a couple of tracks, a track called Stung, Magnetic City, and what else? So, in, in, with that in mind, was was your label primarily a vehicle for you to release your own music? Yeah, I mean, that's that's really the reason I started the label in the first place. I met, um, I was actually interviewing. Kevin Martin, who's otherwise known as The Bug, for Accelerator magazine around about 2001, 2002. And when I met him, I gave him a CD of uh, some of the stuff I'd been working on. And on it was this track called Sign of the Dub, which was a cover of Prince's Sign of the Times. And he kind of liked it and he was like, oh, that's good. You should release that. I was like, uh, I can't be bothered to make someone like it. I mean, it was a beatless, it's just a bass pulse with a kind of Jamaican spoken word vocal over the top. So it wasn't wasn't the most obvious thing that um, people would be like, yeah, great, let's release that. So, you know, I just gave it to him because I thought he might be interested, having heard his earlier stuff. And he was enthusiastic enough about it that I just felt, and he, he hooked me up with a, a distributor as well. So he made it easy for me. So it's really all his fault. And um, since the label's evol evolved into um, a vehicle to release other artists as well as yourself, you know, what was your mission statement? Do, do you have a manifesto with the label? What's your vision for it? Well, there wasn't, there wasn't a mission statement. Um, originally it was just you know how do you like when you like music when you hear music you like you get a feeling in your stomach or if it's in your stomach or you get a tingle somewhere it's just kind of hard to put that into words and call it a mission statement mm. um but now i don't know now i now the label is almost six years old i feel like yeah i know what the mission statement is i just want to release the best producers from all the genres i like so that's yeah. you know that's a simple mission statement it is simple that it, you know like a, in the lecture with martin yesterday and also talking to flying lotus earlier saying you know one thing that um is common amongst artists that i like is that they have their own sound and i think that's also applicable to your label is that although I couldn't say Hyperdub is a this or that label in terms of genre, it definitely has a texture and a sound that people immediately know whether mm. a record would fit or not. Yeah, I mean, I don't, down to your I don't think or? it's a particularly eclectic label because right. I think there is a consistency, although I'm still working out what that consistency is, but I think there is a consistency to the stuff that comes out in the label and... Increasingly, I'm starting to think that actually it's, it's kind of nice. Maybe it's just science fiction or something, but you just make up your own little genre, your own little world that it, that cuts across your favorite genres. So it kind of joins the dots between dubstep, grime, funky, hip hop, house, reggae. And that's its own little cosmos. And actually, talking of Martin and Flylo, you're performing tonight at Brain Feeder. Um, I know that that's not the first Brain Feeder show you would have done. Um, how did that connection come about? Well, I met Flying Lotus when I was doing this at the Red Bull Music Academy in Melbourne three or four years ago. Um, I met him on the roof of the building. Um, so, yeah, we just kept in contact and... Um, 
started some tunes together that we've never finished. My fault, I think. And because really these Americans just only spend a couple of minutes on tunes and it seems to be done, whereas, you know, they all, they all, they all make really short tracks as well as weir weirdos. Um, <laughs> especially the ones from LA. Um, <laughs> yeah, hippies, God. What was the question? Don't worry, Steve. Um, but with that in mind, I mean, you know, you, everything cross-pollinating, you ha being able to put Sam I Am out as well as Burial on the same label, you being able to do nights with, you know, Fly Low, Martin, Daedalus and so on, it feels like a very healthy time um, music-wise and things are cross-pollinating and good music is prevailing. So is it a good time for you to have a label with all of that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm enjoying it. It's very stressful. I think everyone's enjoying it that's involved in those related little islands that are connected, if islands in different scenes that are somehow connected. So the reason I was laughing there is because I just got this memory of, um, <laughs> I think Martin was talking, I think Martin had this quote about brain, <laughs> brain feeder, the brain feeder crew, it's, he described them as the Muppets, like the Muppets, that everyone's kind of different creature of some kind. Um, Everyone's coming from a slightly different world. You set me up with a great question there. Which Muppet am I? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but he, he was right when he said Gas Lamp Killer was animal. Well, that's just so easy, though. That's the easiest one of all. Come on, which one are you? <laughs> oh, Willie's here. Okay, look. <laughs> What's up? I thought I was Miss Piggy. <laughs> I'm Miss Piggy secretly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you cared. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about some of the other artists that you've signed and released over the last five years on Hyperdub, because mm -hmm. it really is quite diverse. Sure, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, the most famous one is Burial. All right, so let's go there for a minute. <coughs> I mean, did um, you ever anticipate for a second when you went to put that record out that it would be so phenomenally successful? Well, we were kind of scared it would not sell 500. So, no. Um, I mean, mainly because we hadn't put an album out before, so it was like, okay, we're going into new territory here. We're selling 500, 10 inches at the time, so it's like taking a step forward. <clears throat> so you, you know, you tread tentatively. Didn't really have any ambition for the label, so yeah, obviously that the burial stuff went down very well and. It was just one surprise after another surprise. Um, uh, so, Burial was the first artist that I released on the label who wasn't myself and Space Ape. How many records did that sell, that album? Well, the first one? Yeah. Um, sold 30 or 40,000 of the CD. You know, five to ten thousand in the vinyl. A lot more. Ballpark. Uh, more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, just to put it in context for us or people that don't run a label at the moment, you know, what for the average artist, specialist music artist, if you like, what could what would you anticipate selling on a good day? Yeah, I mean, we mostly re release 12 inches, and they do generally 1,200 to 3,500, which, you know, fif 10 years ago, 15 years ago, is it's a joke, to be honest, because I know, like, for example, drum and bass in the 90s, house music, techno in the 90s, you know, you triple that, quadruple it, mm. and more. You know, big dance records, um someone could live off the record sales, whereas that's a very rare phenomenon, I think, in underground music these days. Um, so, you know, I think we're all having fun, but things are very different from, from the 90s, I think, when, you know, clearly what's happened is uh, 
there's been a rock music, indie music resurgence. And, you know, the idea of the faceless electronic music producer is, 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 is kind of slightly out of vogue generally these days. Don't you feel that that cycle is coming back now at this point? I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not, I, not in a. Not sure. I, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced it is actually. But talking, I think we're still losing out to gu guitars. Right. Okay. But I mean, talking of faceless, you know, how do you explain pretty much little or no press, absolutely no presence, a faceless producer, thirty thousand first record, and you know that's not a bad look for an independent record label that needs to survive. Yeah. No. I, I mean, it's it's certainly helped the label survive. It means the label doesn't have to care whether records other producers records sell or not which is obviously great um you don't have to use business to make aesthetic decisions mm. but burial really still is an exception you know he's like people try and sound like him they don't not, nobody quite sounds like him nobody quite has that level of emotion packed into the tracks and <coughs> You know, since Burial, there's been a spate of, you know, people trying to do the faceless, faceless thing, but it, it just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't wash for me. It seems a bit contrived, whereas the thing, the unique thing about Burial was it's even no matter how much cynicism his anonymity seemed to create amongst people who just didn't trust that it wasn't uh, a marketing ploy. Um, you know, it was just naive, innocent desire not to be in the spotlight or known for anything apart from his music. Mm. Um, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I remember when you, when um, that record was nominated for a Mercury, no? Yeah. And... Um, I remember, you know, opening the Sun newspaper. If you're not from the UK, the Sun newspaper is a tabloid here that has the highest circulation beyond, I, don't, I think, pretty much any other paper. And, um, you know, on, on page three or something, or page five, it was like, you know, who is Burial? Which, the, the mission to unmask Burial. What was that whole time like for you as, as label manager? Were people phoning you up from tabloid newspapers? It was pretty horrible, actually. Um that track Black Sun actually came off the back of a burnt copy of the Sun newspaper. Wow. Um, it was just annoying, like really annoying, irritating. The journalist who was involved with that was Scottish. It was, it was particularly embarrassing. <laughs> um, I was burning kilts, that's right and said. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just really irritating more than anything. It's like, you know, all the guy wants to do is have a quiet life. And it's not as if he's a politician or Paris Hilton. You know, someone who's actively seeking attention. He's definitely not Paris Hilton, just in case somebody thinks that that was a hint into his true identity. <laughs> Strange thought. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, really irritating, and it you know it, it makes you kind of recoil and close in, like close down the ranks, and and really just um, makes you want to hide, mm. basically, then not let anyone into the into your kind of uh, not speak to anyone, not speak to the press at all, not tell anyone anything, be really secret about. Everything. So it's not. I don't think it's a particularly healthy reaction to have. I mean, it is quite rare for an independent record label to have sales like that. So if you if you had like hostile bids from people and people trying to sign, or I mean, I guess he's the kind of character that's interested in staying loyal to you anyway. So yeah, to be honest, he's not bothered. He's just not really bothered. He's just you know living, getting on with his life, and. I, th I think he did have a few approaches through the back door, MySpace and so on. Nothing came through me. I think a couple of people 
I sniffed out a couple of people and, you know, put the shutters up. Yeah. Well, do you want to play us a, I mean, it can be Burial, anyone else on the label, have you got another track from Hyperdub that you'd like to play right now? Um, we should probably play some Burial. So this is uh, one of my favorite burial tracks. Which is the first track off his first album. The track's called Distant Lights. <laughs> 